Good day and welcome to the Classroom Professor Math Podcast. This program is designed to help you to prepare and teach mathematics more easily, efficiently and effectively to truly engage your students in mathematical thinking and to develop their numeracy. Hello everyone, I'm Peter Price of Classroom Professor. Welcome to the very first episode of our podcast and the topic today is 10 frames. I don't know if you've heard of 10 frames before but in my work as a lecturer to pre-service teachers or student teachers this is the number one resource that I recommend that they use. It's really cheap, it's easy to use and it's incredibly versatile. I've got one here on the screen as you can see I hope you can see depending on the resolution on your video it's a set of 10 squares in two rows of five now I've got mine positioned vertically but of course you could turn it around and do it horizontally it depends on the age group of the students and exactly what it is that you're teaching um, this is my preferred one because then you can put two of them together and show tens and ones quite easily and we'll, we'll get onto that so as I said, I think this is one of the most versatile resources that you can use in the maths classroom and one that is incredibly easy to put together. So you can uh, produce a, a template which you can download from the website today. So you can get a copy of this one if you want to, or you can make your own up, it's not hard. It, as I said, just two rows of five squares in a, a grid of 10, and then your students just need some counters. I'm using a magnetic whiteboard, so these are magnetic counters, and I can just position these on the, the 10 frame like so. So you can see with 10 squares, it'll let you show the numbers all the way from zero up to 10 inclusive. I've got two recommended um, arrangements for the counters. If I'm showing the number six, this is one recommended form. You can see that there are two rows of three the alternative is to arrange them that way where you start if you've got it horizontally you'll have to decide whether you start on the bottom or the top but basically start in one row of five and when that one's full then you start in the second row so there's seven and so on the beauty of this is that it takes advantage of a term which we like to use at university which is subitizing no doubt you've heard of this Subitizing is the ability to recognize how many there are in a group without actually counting them. So if I didn't tell you how many counters were there, by glancing at it, I'm sure you can see that there have to be six, especially when you know that this is a 10 frame and there are rows of five. So you can glance at that, see that that column is full, so therefore it has five, there's one more, and five plus one is a simple known fact. So even a child can look at this and go, once they get used to it, they'll say, there are six there. If we arrange it the other way in pairs, again, you can subitize this quite easily and say there are six because you can see three. Three is a number we can subitize um, because it's basically up to four or five we can subitize. We can see three, we can see two rows of three, and so we know it's six. Alternatively, if we have more counters, if we have eight there, eight is a large number for subitizing unless it's in some um, ordered arrangement. But even if this wasn't in a, a, any sort of special arrangement, because there are two left over, once you understand the number 10 and you know the number's up to 10, then uh, you can see again quite easily that that's eight. So let's go back to six. The 10 frame reveals aspects of a number like six really clearly. For example, as I've already mentioned, there are two rows of three, so we can see that six is double three. We can see that the rows are even. We have the, or columns in this case, because they're vertical, they're both the same number. This is double three. It, there are even columns. It reveals that this is an even number, whereas, of course, if we had an extra one making seven, we can see seven is not even because the rows are of different lengths. And so we could say, you can see this is an odd number, you can see that's an even number with this arrangement. You can see that if you take six away from 10, there are four left, there are four spaces there. 
If we had counters of another color, we could fill those with another color and show four and six together, making 10. So that's another aspect. If we arrange it this way, we can see that six is just one more than five. It's more than halfway. If we're doing rounding, we can see that this number will round to the nearest 10. We'll go up to the next 10. Of course, we can have another 10 frame with other counters and so on. All right. So that's one use. The beauty of the 10 frame is that it mirrors the structure of base 10 numbers. Because all of our numbers are based on groups of 10, there's a phrase that we use, which is the collected multi-unit. So in other words, if we fill this up completely, and I'll use these two as well. This is at one and the same, at the same time, we have 10 individual singles or ones, but we also have one group. So that's the idea of the collected multi-unit. So when we write down numbers for multi-place multi or multi-digit numbers, the numbers for the tens each represent a collection of individual ones. So we can use 10 frames for topics in numeration, in place value, in teaching number facts, and in computation. I'm going to illustrate the idea of using this for uh, number facts. I'm going to remove this one. Which I've blue tack to the screen, so I'll just remove that. And I'll blue tack this one up instead. This, of course, is a double 10 frame. So here we have 20 squares. Now I've realized as I'm talking that I don't have enough counters. So I'm going to draw some on here. What I'm going to talk about here is the way this will help students to learn plus nine number facts. In this example, I'm going to add nine and four. So I've drawn nine little circles. If I had more counters, I would use them. So I'd put nine counters on there. And I'm going to put another four on this side. Now, nine plus four on the surface isn't that simple a number fact. The numbers are fairly big. It goes beyond 10. So we get into the tricky teen numbers. But by placing them on a pair of 10 frames or double 10 frames, it's quite easy to see. And I believe that a, a child would see this quite simply, that there's one missing up here and we've got four over here. If we want to know how many there are, it's a simple matter of transferring that one to there, filling up this left-hand 10 frame, showing that there are only three on the other side. And straight away we can see there's one 10 and three ones. And so we have the number 13. So I think that's a, a very clear demonstration. Let's try a different number. So we'll try 18 using that arrangement. Uh, sorry, 8. My apologies. 9 plus 8. So here we have another 9 plus number fact. This time it's 9 plus 8. Again, we can move one of these, put it over on that side. And again, we have a 10. And now we have 7 on this side. Of course, the child will be able to see, once you do several of these, that it's really simple that if we just take one away from this number here, add it to the 9 to make 10, we end up with a two-digit number. It will always be in the teens. It will be 10 plus one less than that number that's being added. So that's a, a demonstration of 10 frames. As an accompaniment to this podcast today, uh, we've got some resources that you can download. We've got the templates for the single and double 10 frames. And we also have a couple of worksheets that you might like to use with that as well. Thank you for joining us at the Classroom Professor Math Podcast. You can contact me via email at peter at classroomprofessor.com and you can follow me on Twitter with the username peter underscore price. We'd love you to visit our website. It's classroomprofessor.com where we currently have the free ebook for download 10 minutes a day. 
Times Tables worksheets. If you've enjoyed the show, please go to iTunes and rate the show. And I look forward to speaking with you next time. Until then, goodbye.